So, um, yeah, so this is how it looks. Um, it's the same application on any device. And this is the demo slide. Uh, so this is running locally. Uh, it's already loaded and I'm just using a few features of, uh, this is Sublime Edit, Sublime Text. <coughs> I've just realized I can run Scrivener now. <laughs> uh, this is uh, LibreOffice. Uh, the Excel version of it <coughs> called Calc. Calc. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's full featured. It's exactly the same as the desktop application. Are you using a Chromebook in this example? Uh, this is uh, on on a, on a laptop, a normal laptop. Okay. Looks like Firefox. It's Firefox. Yes. So, and I'm assuming this all works over. You, that your, your example there is not encrypted HTTP, but I'm assuming it all works through HTTPS. Uh, well, this is from uh, this is running locally. So this particular example is HTTP, but it, it's it's transparent in that regard. So we can. It'll run over HTTPS. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I just uh, edited a small formula there to show that that works. <laughs> and so with integration with, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Let, let the yeah, yeah. So then I have another demo of actually loading um, the whole container. Um, this is also HTTP, unfortunately, but HTTPS works. Um, so uh, this is loading uh, our service in the UK, and this is loading from... Uh, from here, uh, over over the internet. Can you hit F12? And, oh, this is a video, isn't it? The video, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah. could hit F12, but we could. It just reload the yeah. video. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did this in the hotel on um, Tuesday, I think. Plus, I have a Mac. There yeah. is. Oh, there's developer tools. That I'm sure. So this is downloading the container from some web service that was in the UK from correct from just yeah. from just from, from the web. US. Yes. So that it's not that's not the com compilation happening. It's that's not the compilation. Happening. Okay. That's just the container being downloaded. Right. That's very fast yeah. compilation. So the compilation happens now. Sometimes you see the the cursor stops for a few seconds. That's when the compilation happens. But we're we're still working on um, getting that actually on another thread so that it can happen while the container continues running. So is this what the user would go through, what they would experience? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's one possible deployment method that we can... Presumably this is cached now, so if you went to that again, you wouldn't have to download it. Right. Okay. So the, Yeah, so if you're local in HQ, it's going to be super fast. But if you're sitting yeah. on a yeah. dial-up class hotel, yeah, that works. Uh, well, I, 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 I was thinking about the process for the average end user that might be using. So again, go back to the MRI machine, the nurse that's that's setting up the patient. Are She's they not going to have to type this? Experience this? No. He's not going to have to type no, no. that. We could just uh, click that, a saved bookmark. It's, it's, it's almost like a, you install once and then leave it on the device. Yeah. So there'll be an install process, but then you just leave it there. It, yeah. it, and then the updates would come down yeah. from the, the, okay. the central. And, and we can actually deploy this, for example, using a Chrome extension or a Chrome OS app. Um, and then it would be, it, it could pre-download all those files. Like this is the geekiest, this is all. This is, we've opened up the covers and this yeah. is how it works. Yeah. Open yeah. the command. You can make it shiny. Yeah. I like shiny. <laughs> I like shiny. <laughs> and simple. that's it from my side. So when it comes to running more involved apps, like something like Photoshop or something like that, the performance is still pretty solid? Um, yeah, I think so. I think so. So I'm not 100% sure about the graphics side of that um, because we only support the GPU on this high level. Um, but in general, yes. At, at the end there, did you have, uh, were you showing accessing files between the two containers? You, you, you had a file browser there. Uh, that was me saving. 
Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. but, but in we theory, could, you, yes. with the two containers, they can access, like we talked about earlier, they can access the same underlying file system. Yeah. And you, so, you, you talked about right. data security. You haven't really touched on that in this at all. So from my perspective, I'm running Office. There are so many versions of Office now across all the different apps, all the different platforms are optimized for those platforms. Um, I care more about digital rights management for the documents mm -hmm. so they can go to the places and be used where I want, not necessarily about the application delivery trying to stop that happening. Are you guys doing anything like that with this? You talked about data security earlier on. Um, in regard to making sure the, the documents are saved in the right place? I, I guess the data security, are you just implying that you've got data security because you're running this within a container and it's the app delivery that's securing that? You're not actually doing any kind of digital rights manager or anything around the data or the documents there. And that, that's fair enough. I'm just kind of... It, 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 I, think that, I think the thing is, is it, like we're trying to say, by, by administration, by policy, you can save these documents where an administrator says they need to be saved to. So you might have one version of Word that needs to save to one directory, and you might have something else that needs to go to the cloud. So we can say this, we can sort of say, this goes to the cloud, this doesn't go to the cloud, this stays in the sandbox. And when you go back onto the corporate network, you then have to save to a, a, a folder on the corporate network. But you're doing that at an application container level, you're not doing that per document. Correct. So, so. For instance, with GDPR, I have to like maybe categorize documents at different levels. Yep. Um, but I can open them with the same Word application. That that would be outside of kind of your remit. Um, as in, as in, you have a folder that only opens with a certain version of Word. No, I th I, I have a document that I can only distribute internally, or a document I can distribute publicly, or a document that is only available to be open for the next three months, or things like that. But, that's not really. So you, you can run an application that helps you do that yeah. in our container. And then yeah, that's yeah. the solution. But that's, that's outside of your remit. When you're saying right. data control, you're just controlling that because of each thing that you're downloading. The, the MRI example, you can say you Correct. can only save MRI scans to this location. But that's part of the application Correct. packaging piece. Yeah, I don't think you'd run RMS apps <coughs> on this. That's my, my view. Uh, can I ask if if a if a large company already has their own kind of app store that uses login to in order to get whatever they're looking for? Yep. Are you able to integrate with existing app stores, or are you thinking of developing your own? We've all, I think, we've always said we want to do. If somebody's using, let's say, MSI and they're, they're doing things like SCCM and, and, and just delivering applications like that, we want to. We want to just people to continue using that as a way to deliver the applications. Mm. Um, our delivery mechanism is really um, a web server. Right. So point your web browser at the web server, get your app. Correct. So, but we want we want people to have like a portfolio of ready built containers with applications. Because I think most people would expect some sort of login process yeah. based on their entitlements. It would then populate that with the apps Correct. that are available. Do so you we, have we would... a marketplace? So that you, do you have a marketplace nope. that you can show today? Nope. Okay. Is this a product we would buy and put in our data center or is this a service? It depends where you want it to go. It's because we only need a web server. Do you want it on the clean side or the dirty side of the firewall? The question I was asking about an app store is that you could spend a lot of time developing yet another app store. Probably what's more required is just to be able to integrate <coughs> an existing thing like Horizon or something like that. So you can then deliver a desktop or any number of different things. I think maybe a better approach would be to plug into existing that, delivery mechanisms mm -hmm. rather than building yet sure. another we, app store. To, we don't to want to that. build an app store. We, no. It's, if, if somebody can just point at, say, this person has rights based on a directory service, to get this application then they would see it on their app store and you just point at the website and get it delivered we can it, it's almost like um when i downloaded that one um, from the hotel i had to put a username and password in mm. so that depends on the policy based on the company if the company has a large number of users they probably do it a different way so do you have any containers built that have some of the likes applications we talked about earlier i mean the for it, that you've worked, used during your testing for example office xp or something like that do you have any containers like in your Ooh, lab? Office, Office 2010? Show those in the server. What now? Yeah, you've got a, <laughs> we've got a laptop, we got wireless. Um, Can we see it? So, <laughs> we, we don't have it online, no. Okay. No. So, question on uh, extending extent, existing 
application virtualization tools. So I have FinApp, I have a way of delivering uh, virtualized applications to a traditional set of desktops that works well. How do you guys extend that type of environment to say, okay, this is how we complement uh, thin app installation? It, we've talked to a lot of the sort of um, application. It depends on what it needs to actually deliver to the container. A lot of them need, um, it's like the layering technologies, they need a, a filter driver in a certain version of Windows to run. Um, it's a bit like, um, then what we would do is put that Windows in so they can install their filter driver and deliver those application subsets within to the container. We want, we, you know, we're an, as an application delivery technology, we're an empty container, mm -hmm. you know, so the application delivery methodologies, we want to work with the other people to say, you've already done MSIs, you've already done AppV, you've already done ThinApp, just use them and deliver them into the container. What do you need to deliver them into our container is the bit where we will be able to put it into the container. Yeah. So if it's so a filter driver. So you're thinning the, the applicability of use cases for some of these apps. Correct. Whereas before I could only use AppV thin app on a Windows machine. Yep. Now I can take that and extend that capability to anything that has a browser. Correct. That supports web. web yeah, code. so we, we've, we've been talking to a few of them and you know the, the limitation that they have is they can deliver Windows apps to Windows devices. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying to them is, well, how about you deliver them to any device? So I'm not re from a overhead perspective. I'm not adding the overhead of finding uh, adding yet another packaging platform. Correct. You guys are, are you, you guys are just another target. Correct. For my existing packaged application. It's, it's you know there's there's some um, slides coming up which I might not go into. <laughs> so but it's around um, who we're, who we're talking to and a lot of the people we talk to, they've already got. You, you ask them, you know, what technologies have you got? And they, they list every single technology under the sun. And we go, we don't want to add another set of technologies for packaging applications. We want to use those technologies and have the application delivered into the container. And that just makes more sense. It's, it's giving time back to the administrators. Mm -hmm. Going to an administrator and going, oh, you need to repackage everything again. <laughs> They're going to probably go, what, again? And it's like, it's probably going to be a... a a, not a very good conversation to have. But if we can say to them, all the work you've already done, we're going to utilize that. That's mm. an even better conversation. It gives time back to people. They can improve business then rather than just reinventing the wheel. Do you have any customers that are using this today? These would be my next slides. So, what yes. about the can packaging process? How do you even get an application packaged up? Is it a simple process that's actually going to give that time back to the admin or are they now going to have to fiddle around with how do I get this application that I already have deployed repackaged in this other format? Just it, um, it, It's almost like you can just, we don't change the app at all. So if you, if you put a Linux kernel in, we might have to build a recipe so it builds the wine sort of libraries and stuff like that. But with Windows, you just install it. Right, but do I take like a representation of that application that's already deployed on an OS and, and capture it through some capture tools that you provide? We're not or? app capturing. So and how so do we, I you take just the application it. that exists? Yeah, how do I get it get to it the web server in your to, to even install? stand down? You install it. You install it once install in the container. Install it on what? On, what? on the server or what, what do I install? Where you want. So you can do it just there in your, uh, you can deploy that just to the browser directly or you can install it in the server. No, I think we're just talking about the onboarding process for an application. So I under understand you've done all your existing packaging and everything, So, but you've still got to get that inside your container. So how how do I get that thin app or the- yeah, How do I create it? the container? Yeah, Get exactly. the XP floppies. You put them in the computer. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, find a... so if, if we talk about the example of on the Chromebook version um, that we did early. So what we did then was we took install an executable or install a manifest. The manifest is just a recipe we put together. The executable was an ex executable or an MSI that had already been done. So you just click install and it would install into the container and then you would just run it. But when you say click install, what is that? Do I have to come to you to get that nope. container built? How do I, how do I get that container? With, is, how do you get the you, container? It, it, it's a case of the, there'll be a process where you go online and that's either on your web service or on our service. And you say, okay, what do you want? Do you want Linux? Do you want Windows? You uh, you know, when we're going to launch, it will be with Linux. So you'll have to go down the Linux route. We, we, we're taking the sort of approach that others have taken. You know, you, you start off with some, a single operating system and then you move to multiple operating so systems. Does, so does that be, launch in the browser, I guess? That, 
in and correct you yeah. so you kind of you kick off your container runtime and then you've got there's there's two ways to do it you can build a container with the apps already in so you can have a library of pre-built containers with apps but how do i build that container that's where you go to the online you have an online service or you can put it onto a local host yeah it would be great if you guys publish a video showing that like yes we will that, that, that would be <laughs> It would be great if they could do it right now, but yes, I, that, it would be it would be even better. the next best thing is I will, to do. A, I will say we wanted to do live stuff, but somebody said at the back, "Don't do live demos. Work with children or animals." So, mm. um. <laughs> <laughs> so as yeah. WebAssembly is coming online as it matures now, do you anticipate a lot of um, competition in this space? Because so WebAssembly is pretty radical. It's, it's so, Jeff, that's a good question. Who I'm, I was struggling to come up. Who are their competitors? Well, there there are none. WebAssembly is brand new. Well, not to web competitors of WebAssembly, but competitors to General drop service. <clears throat> what was that? Well, well I think WebAssembly for, enables for your product, concept. correct? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. WebAssembly kind of uh, was started, I think they started building that spec out in 2015. Yeah. And now it's matured and you're launching. Um, I, I think it's pretty incredible we, product we, but i think just... I, th I think we're under no misconception that as soon as we come out and start to deliver product out there'll be people trying to replicate what we do um i'm pretty sure there are people out there trying to maintain us like we did a bit of stealth um because you don't want to let people know what you're doing because they will try and come out and try and replicate what about what like doing. microsoft because they could probably put this as a feature in windows is that a threat um threat or an exit <laughs> yeah. Embrace extend, extend, extend. It just yeah. launched. <laughs> Yoink! Yeah, that right. just means it's cheaper. It's not. So the, buy it now right. because it's going to get not really not expensive yeah. in a year. It would not be the first company that has been acquired. There's a price. Before they had a customer base. It's it, it's it's quite interesting because we we keep getting asked by large governments that oh, do we want to spend time doing this because are you going to be around in six months, you know, or, or are you going to be part of a portfolio of another company that yeah. we then can't afford. So, so what, what exactly is the current state of the product? We're announcing the GA date probably in the next couple of weeks, as soon as we're away from San Francisco. So this sort of took a week away. Then it will probably be towards the end of the month, uh, middle of next month, when we'll have the first version available. Then that will be jet, the GA version. Um, so it's all, it's all down to somebody yeah. then putting a credit card in or putting a license agreement together and away they go. But what will be the GA version? It'll just be that Linux? It'll be Linux with full graphics. It'll be single, single app, single container. Then we'll have a rapid roadmap to add additional features, which will be, um, it depends on him and his <laughs> development team, but it'll probably be multi-app, multi-container. Um, and then we'll look down the, uh, the ability for people to put their own operating systems in after that.